need to uh, find a plan B uh, to kerosene for industry. Uh, the pressures we get today to become more and more environmentally friendly, the pressure there is, you know, on the, the, the fuel itself, you know, becoming more and more scarce. There's a real opportunity here for us uh, to uh, break ground, you know, with uh, biofuels. We need a plan B uh, to kerosene for industry. And I think we have a chance here with, with the biofuels. What is EADS doing on, on, on the subject? Basically, what we're trying to do here is to look at the entire value chain uh, of this industry from, uh, you know, the production uh, of, in our case, we're really focusing on algae eh? uh, as an advanced research. We also do uh, gas to liquid, but, but I'm really talking about biofuels made out of algae, and we're looking at the entire value chain that goes from the production of algae until the usage into uh, the aircraft. And uh, we're trying to be promoters of this value chain in order to make sure that we have, you know, sustainable mean to get uh, biofuel in the future. Okay, and how, do you, how far away do you say we, we are from regular use in commercial aircraft? Well, I, I think that uh, if we all work together in our industry, I think that within 10 years we could have, you know, uh, a portion of our, you know, aircrafts being uh, powered by biofuel, but that, those would be what I call pilots, you know, two free uh, legs, you know, I could be from, let's say, Paris to Toulouse or Hamburg to Munich or even in the U.S., you know, you could imagine Boeing have uh, some, some legs there that, that could be, uh, you know, commercial uh, with some uh, <coughs> aircraft companies, but, but uh, this is something that I would say uh, I could see something in, in 2030, you know, around 10% of our needs covered with, with uh, uh, you know, biofuels. What would you say is the biggest challenge then to getting these into, uh, into regular usage? Is it, is it the standards, the certification? No, because I think the standards and their certifications will be very similar to what, to what exists today. We need to make this transparent. I think the major challenges are, uh, in my mind, m more business, uh, you know, to, to, to find a sustainable business to that value chain. That's where I think we have to focus on. Uh, we will show uh, during FAMBRO uh, our airplane, our little airplane flying with uh, by a few hundred percent made up out of algae, and uh, we know it's feasible. The question is, is it feasible at the right price? And that's where we need now to establish, you know, do we have uh, a business case for this? Okay. You've talked about the business. Obviously, uh, there is that the whole established um, oil industry that, that already exists and the, the whole established infrastructure. So my question really is, who pays for this new technology, introducing it into the, into the into the infrastructure in a way, you know, is it the airlines, is it, is it uh, governments, is it, uh, uh, is it industry, who, who actually should be sort of paying for this? I think it's all of the above. I think this has to be a, a, an incredible effort uh, and it uh, has to join public and private forces, investors, uh, and, and our industry has to be, you know, also uh, really uh, heavily involved. And, and it cannot be, you know, isolated parts because otherwise we will never make it. Okay. And what about the uh, the, uh, the the uh, issues of sort of feedstock and of um, sort of you know biofuels uh, sort of eating up, using up sort of uh, precious land or water for uh, sort of human consumption? No, I don't think that's an opportunity. I don't think it's uh, a threat. First of all, those algae could not compete with food. That's something that uh, you know, want to make clear. Uh, it could compete with uh, uh, cosmetics, for example, but the, IR, the byproducts that we get from uh, making oil out of algae can be used for cosmetics. So maybe it's uh, an opportunity there also. But in terms of land and usage of land, uh, the algae are the most efficient mean today uh, to get a lot you know, of oil that can be turned into biofuel. And I think, uh, as you know, in Europe, for example, there is a lot of land that is not used, or farmers are asked, you know, not to use land. That kind of, you know, those kind of applications could be perfect for us, perfect ground to get and grow algae to uh, for the application of biofuels. Okay. And to sum up, what, what, what do you think is the most exciting uh, breakthrough we have in biofuels coming up uh, that, that you see in the next sort of uh, couple of years? 
I think that uh, for me, like I said, I'm uh, very high on the algae's because from an efficiency standpoint, they're uh, the best you know, uh, mean today to get uh, fuel out of it. Second, they require a lot of CO2, uh, you know, to, to, to get one ton of algae's you need to insert uh, as a doping system 1.8 tons of CO2. So it's a very high rate, and this we, we could grab that CO2 from the plants that emit uh, those, uh, you know, those uh, pollutants. It's not a real pollutant, but it, it is for, from a, uh, a global warming standpoint. And we could use that CO2 you know, in order to grow our algae. So there is a lot of benefits through that because uh, the entire value chain at the end is uh, carbon neutral, and that's very important to us. Okay, excellent. Thanks very much.